So now that we've gone through and looked at some of the options for blending layers, let's see what we can do with adding text. So I'm just going to open this up again and select my 6x9 and zoom out so that I can see it. And then I'll just grab one of the pictures that I had made. If I can find it in here. So here's some of the pictures that I had made, and we'll just add some text to these. And um, this is, I saved this as a JPEG, so it's just one big image, so I can't go through and edit the layers anymore. I would have had to open up that layers, the file project, if I wanted to keep working on this. Um, but when I'm ready with this, it's easier just to save it as a JPEG and then open it up again and add text. And I can just do that by typing out a title. And then this is kind of my text panel up here. So this is um, the kerning or the spacing between letters. I can make it closer together or wider. Depending on the genre, usually for most book titles, it'll look more professional if you have the text really spaced out with a lot of spacing. And I can move this around. I can um, increase the size this way. I've added a lot of fonts built in. I'll probably add more in the future. Um, but there's a lot to get started with, enough for most genres. If you can't find any font that you like, you can still use this tool to make the art and then use another tool to add the text. You don't want to do anything too fancy. Um, maybe for some paranormal romance or young adult fantasy books, you can have a more fancy text. But for most books, you really want something that's clean and simple. There's a lot of cool fonts. Um, it's kind of a distraction with a lot of indie authors or self-publishing authors. When you are just starting to design, you might see all these really awesome fonts and think, that's great, I want that one. And then you'll use a bunch of different fancy fonts for the title and for the author name. You want to pick one fancy font or decorative font for the title, maybe, but then keep the author name and all the other text small and simple. And even for the author name, I mean, this one, like this is probably a little too plain for the title, but it's sometimes better to go too plain than to do something too weird and crazy. You want it to be legible, but you don't really have to worry so much about having it super clear like as a thumbnail. Some people will tell you that it's really important to be able to see the entire title and to be able to read it from really tiny. I disagree. Um, I think the book cover as a whole should look really good and professional, but legibility as a thumbnail isn't really your biggest concern. Once you've picked something, I'm going to just use Control, Copy, Control, V to copy that layer. And then I'll change this one to a light color to put it down the bottom. I usually like to have my author name in all caps. And this font is too fancy for the other name. I often like simple serif fonts or sans serif fonts. And I like them to be pretty spread out. With your author name, you don't have to make it too small. You want it pretty big for a thriller or a supernatural um, adventure story or something. But for most, I think a little bit smaller than your title. 
and bold enough to be clear, but not really super attention grabbing. For a different genre, we might want to make this much bigger and bolder. There's um, Open Sans here. That's one of my favorite fonts for basic sans serif stuff. We'll probably use that a lot more too. And you can also make this thinner. So like this might work for a European thriller or something, but it's not gonna work so well for this cover. I'm just playing around right now. And I don't really like this title either. I had done this cover before I might have a sample somewhere. Source Code Pro is another really awesome sans serif font. I might actually save this and use it as a title name later. One thing to be aware of, I'm pretty sure if you change the width, if you drag this around and then save the project file, when you open the project file again, that part won't be saved. It'll go back to the regular um, default text. So you'll have to maybe resize it if you were making it bigger or smaller that way. I'll pick something simple, simple for now, kind of like that. I usually also like to have some smaller text. Um, some people say that as a thumbnail, you can't read the really tiny text so you don't need it. But I counter, even if you can't read all the tiny text on the cover, it still makes it look more professional if it's there because you have something to put there. And what I mean by tiny text, for example, is the subtitle or tagline or even a quote or a review or something. Often you'll see something kind of like this up at the top. It might be really small. And it could be a review like that. If you don't have any reviews to put up on the top like that, that's fine. You can use a tagline. You could use um, some other little text. I want to actually make this even smaller. Title usually one you want it kind of to fill the width, um, but that depends on the genre. And really remember the art is the most important thing. So you want your text not to get in the way of the art. You don't want the text to cover up or distract from the art. The text should just look like it. It really fits into the picture. So I might do something like that. Um, I'm going to go through and play with the other layers and the other book covers as well. And we'll pick the right fonts for each of the covers and then try to add some text effects. So I have my layers now. These are just layer boxes over here. So I can move them around this way. But I can also select this panel over here, which is textiles. And there's some built-in textiles. These actually aren't great. These are kind of old-fashioned um, they're all I could get to work with the program, but they're a place to start. So I can pick something like this. And even though some of these, like that's not going to work for any book cover because it looks kind of old fashioned. But some of these, maybe the gold, which comes with the drop shadow, it's a starting place. But I can go back to layers and find this text box which is this one. 
And if I click here under effects, oops. There it is. So because I put all these all these text effects on this text layer, now under the layers panel, under this text box, I have all these different effects. And I can't totally customize these the way that I would with um, Photoshop, but I can remove some of them if I think they're too much, if I don't want them. This drop shadow actually isn't so bad. Um, so I could leave that. I could change the color a little bit. And then remember, I can also go up here to colors and change some things. I could change this color. I could change the brightness. Anyway, there's a lot of things that you can do with the uh, text in this program. Um, I'll play more with the different layers. When I have all these samples done, you'll be able to just open a sample and use the text effects that I had used, which will make it a lot easier. I might even just make a file with a whole bunch of different text layers and text effects so that you can um, use those in your book cover. Because mainly, once I have a template and I have the text, you're not going to want to use the same picture anyway because somebody else could just use the same picture. So when you open up one of my templates, you can just delete that layer and add your picture and use the same text and just change the text to your title, your author name. That's going to be the easiest way to get started. So I'm going to stop this video here and I'm going to just probably I'll make some templates for the other samples that we had made and I'll go through explaining kind of what I'm doing.